Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going through all of the makeup that I wore in June, seeing if I want to declutter any of it. And hopefully I will, because this is actually the last declutter that I will do before I do my six month inventory check-in and update. So I am hoping that this can make one last little chip away and a bit of a dent. There's a few things in here that are not actually makeup, but that I know I was wanting to declutter. But I've just put them in this box alongside the makeup to be assessed. So let's maybe go through them first. First of all, this from Kiehl's. So this is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Oil Free Cleanser. This leaves my skin feeling so tight. I was never planning to use this on my face this year. I was going to use it on my body just to get it used up. But I've actually just spent the first six months of the year finishing another Kiehl's cleanser that will be in my June empties. And that actually, again, is a face cleanser that left my skin feeling really tight that I have had in the shower for ages. And it even left my body skin feeling really tight. I didn't like using it. I would avoid using it, even though it was in the shower, specifically because I was trying to finish it. I didn't enjoy it. And after spending six months with the other one, I'm not going to put myself through it for this one. I'm just going to declutter this. The other skincare item is this from Dermalogica. It's like a dry powder that you tip up, mix with water to make an exfoliant that you then rub on your face. To be honest, it's just so much of a faff. If I don't keep it in the shower, I don't use it. But because it's got to stay dry, if I keep it in the shower, when you open it, this is like the opening on the top. I feel like water always gets in, then the powder like clumps together, it forms these really hard lumps and um, I don't know if you can actually see it in there. You know, I don't think my camera is going to be that good to focus down through those slats but there's some big hard lumps in there that need like broken up to be able to use the product and I've got other exfoliators so I just really don't need the faff of that so I'm going to declutter this as well. I'm getting my nails done this week so you're getting them in like the absolute last dregs of horror so I do apologise for that. On to the makeup, let me sort it into categories. The first thing I'm going to do is take this lip gloss out. This is a Benefit lip gloss. It is absolutely fine. At the moment I am intending to keep this but the reason I'm taking it out of this video is because I am going to do a lip gloss declutter video. As a spoiler for my upcoming project pan, I've actually got an empty, so I was rolling something in in its place. A couple of the things I thought I would roll in were lip glosses, but when I actually went to use them, a few of them seemed to be off. So I feel like there's definitely a bit of a lip gloss specific declutter required. So I'm going to put this aside out of this video and consider all my lip glosses as a whole category in a separate video. I have two blushes that I've used in the last month and I'm going to keep both of them. First of all, I've got the Diego De La Palma. This is the one that I used in my Get Ready With Me. And then I've also got my beautiful Colourpop Tiana blush. That's the shade of that one. Definitely keeping both of them. I have got three eyeshadows. I've got this Sephora stick eyeshadow. So this was in my eyeshadow declutter video. I said I was going to use it and assess it. So I have used it and I actually really liked it. So I'm going to keep this one. Also going to keep this one from Shantikai. This is the shade Baroque. You can't get this one anymore. So there's no point in me swatching it for you. But the packaging is beautiful and I really like the shade. Last but not least, I've got Colourpop Free Rain. You can't get this in this packaging anymore, but I do believe it comes in just the normal packaging now, so I will give you a swatch of that. So that's it, just very lightly swatched, but you can really work this one up. Definitely keeping that as well. Since we did eyeshadows, let's look at the eyeliners. I've got, this is my Victoria Beckham one. You can kind of tell my more special things or my newer things are still in their boxes because I do have a packaging problem. This is the shade Olive. Again, I use this in my Get Ready With Me. This is like my favourite eyeliner formula ever. I would love to have more of these. I feel like at some point, if I'd ever got to a point where I'd used quite a lot of my other eyeliners, if they're all finished up or expired or whatever, I would replace them all with Victoria Beckham eyeliners. Definitely, definitely keeping this one. This is the long home coal and I would say this was my favourite eyeliner formula before the Victoria Beckham one. I would intend to use this first before I would buy black Victoria Beckham one. I do really really rate this one but I think it's more powdery than the, although the Victoria Beckham one is really powdery, once it's set it's set. This one I feel like stays kind of powdery and it smudges and it doesn't, it does last. I don't mean it disappears but I feel like it doesn't stay in place as well as the Victoria Beckham one. So I would use this up first. I wouldn't declutter it or anything. I'm going to keep it. After I'd use this up I would move to the the Victoria Beckham black eyeliner. This is my current chosen brown and nude kind of eyeliner that I go to. I've had this in a project pan before so I've had a lot of use out of this. Really enjoy it so again I would keep this and intend to finish it before I would go to the Victoria Beckham. You can't actually get this one anymore. If I could have repurchased this I actually would have 
it was number 7 one, but as I won't be able to, I will probably replace these shades with the Victoria Beckham equivalents at some point. Last eyeliner that I'm intending to keep, I think, is this one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. So this is called Liquid Gold. I don't know if you can still get this, but I'll swatch it for you anyway, because it's really, really pretty. So that is what that one looks like. It's a really, really pretty one, and again, it sticks around unlike other eyeliners. One eyeliner that I am decluttering though will be this one from Dior, the shade Satiny Gold. And this is just, it's so dry. Um, I've actually literally just filmed this section, but I'm having to refilm it because of background noise. Um, so I did swatch it there, but if I re-swatch it, if you guys can see, I'm really having to scrub down to get that colour payoff. I actually had to break it to even get the colour payoff because the end of it had completely, almost like hard panned but on an eyeliner. And I just, I don't want to be scrubbing with that kind of pressure. Like that was quite sore scrubbing that on my hand. I don't want to be scrubbing the delicate skin around my eyes. You can't apply that kind of pressure either to your eyes because it's not, there's no hard surface around the eye really for it to be pushing back against if that makes sense. So definitely decluttering this one. And I've got another Dior one in the same formula. This is the shade Spark sparkling black. So again, I'm getting pretty much no payoff from the end. And I'm sure if I broke it, I would get kind of similar. But again, I would need to apply so much pressure and I just don't want to be doing that around my eyes. So I'm going to get rid of this one as well. And then last but not least, we have the Essie Lauder Double Wear. This is in the shade Bronze. So let's swatch this one. So see that's a much, this is what I favourite, is a much sort of softer pencil that you don't need as much pressure with. However, if I'm honest, I don't know if I'm mad on this colour. It looks lovely when I swatch it like that, but I feel like it's just not the most flattering around my eye. I think I'm going to declutter this one. I think there's just maybe a hint too much red in it for me. I just feel like it makes my eyes always look a little bit kind of bloodshot, strangely. So yeah, I'm just going to get rid of that one. Moving on to lips. I've got four lip liners here. In fact, you know what? I'll swatch my liquid lipsticks first because they need to set. First of all, I've got MAC Sorry Not Sorry. This one actually doesn't really set. This is a kind of slightly different formula. It's called the Powder Kiss Liquid Lip Colour. Although it's a kind of liquid lipstick theoretically, it doesn't really set down like a normal liquid lipstick, but that's that one first. Then next to that, I will swatch KVD Project Chimps. And then down at the end here, we've got Anastasia Beverly Hills Catherine. So I will let those ones set and we'll come back to them. In the meantime, I've got four lip liners to consider. So first of all, MAC Red, RE Double D Red. If you remember, this was in my project pan and it was really, really dried up and it now seems to be playing again, which is a bit strange, but won't question it too much. Next to red, I've got MAC Brick. They're all MAC actually. <laughs> next to that we'll do half red. And then next to that I will put fire roasted. That is what fire roasted looks like. And I'm going to keep all four of these lip liners. Which come back to my liquid lipsticks. They've kind of set down now. So I'm going to keep MAC Sorry Not Sorry. I'm going to keep KVD Project Chimps. But I think I'm going to get rid of this ABH Catherine. I feel like it's one that I don't think to reach for very often. I feel like it was very much... When I was doing my makeup that day, I was like, oh, I never use that. I will use that. And I do like it, but for whatever reason, I just, I never reach for it. So I'm going to keep these two and get rid of this one. Which leads us on to the bulk of what I have used this month, which is, of course, as always, my lipsticks. So let's go through the shades and see if any of them can be decluttered. So I have three colour pots. I have Who Run This, Secret Stash, and one that the name has come off of. This is the Nameless. Colourpop one. I'll have a name for it on my inventory, but I don't have it. Uh, the sticker has come off the end, so I don't know what it is based on looking at it. Then next to that, I have put Who Run This, which is one of my absolute favourites, so that is going nowhere. And last but not least, Secret Stash, which I also really, really like. I really like all three of them, actually. I feel like for now, the three of these are staying. Next up, I have got three MAC lipsticks. So first of all, I've got Stay Curious. This is one of the Powder Kiss formulas. That one there, very, very pretty. Then the other two come from the bronzing collection from 2020. So first of all, we've got Cote d'Amour. This is one that I feel like I don't really suit, but I really like the name of, which is probably the wrong reason to keep things. But I don't have a lot of pinks, so I feel like maybe having one or two isn't a terrible thing to have. But next to that, I have Can Do, which I love. 
I feel like at the moment I want to keep all three of these as well. So far six keepers from the lipsticks. Next up I've got three Ella Masca ones and I can say already these three are going. These three are Halloween-y sort of fun shades that I was keeping just in case the occasion came up for them sort of Halloween or Rocky Horror or some kind of costume. I feel like the occasion's never coming up and if it really did you know I'd be able to find something else in a shop like if it was really that urgent. So the blue one is called Vendetta. This one is Posture. I used to absolutely love that. I mean, it would make me look like a corpse, but I did used to love it. And then the last one that I've got is Apocalypse. Oh, that's so dried out now anyway. As you can see, three very sort of theatrical colours that I'm just not going to wear anytime soon, so I'm going to get rid of those three. Another slightly different one that I think I'm ready to part with now is this Max Factor Star Wars The Force Awakens lipstick. So this was a Pat McGrath Max Factor collaboration, but I feel like it's just probably not something I'm going to actually wear. It's very, very pretty. If it was an eyeshadow or something, we might be talking, but I don't really like frosty, metallic-y, sheeny things on my lips, so I don't think I'm ever going to use that, so I'm going to just make my peace with parting with it. I feel like I knew for ages that I really should have gotten rid of this one, but because it was Star Wars and it's Pat McGrath, even though I have stuff from Pat McGrath's own makeup line, but... Yeah, I think this was... Was this before she started her own makeup line? Possibly, I don't know. But I now have the Star Wars Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes. So I feel like that's ticking my box for that sort of Star Wars loving side of my personality. So I'm going to make my peace with getting rid of this one. Next up, I've got Charlotte Tilbury Stone Rose. This is one of my absolute favourite lipsticks. So this one is going nowhere. Where will I swatch it though? Wait, let's do it down here. Kind of belongs over here with the less theatrical colours. So it's a really, really pretty sort of orangey, nudie, sort of gingerbread -y, but in a less intense way than like the likes of Secret Stash is there, you know, if you compare the two. So really, really like that one. So that is Stone Rose from Charlotte Tilbury, which I'm definitely keeping. This next one is actually from Diego Dalla Palma. It's the shade Savannah. It definitely belongs in this family. And as a result, I feel like that's exactly the kind of colour that I really like, so I should own it quite a few times over. But I was going through my collection with this one, trying to dupe it, because this has definitely expired. I used it, it left my lips feeling really, really dried out. I actually ended up with a spot on my lips after I used this, which I have never had a spot on my lips in my life. So bizarre, like right in the middle of my lower lip with a proper head. It was weird. I've never, as I say, I've had like dry and chapped lips but I've never had like a proper spot. So that was really odd and definitely connected to the fact that this has gone off. However, I am not going to declutter this because I love this colour and cannot dupe it within my collection. So I'm going to keep a hold of it, keep looking for a dupe for it and my thought process right now with this actually is that I love the colour that much that I might take this when I go to London between Christmas and New Year. I might take this to that Codate place and get them to make it for me. They do like a custom lipstick service where you can take in a discontinued lipstick or you can just go in and make your own shade completely from scratch. But my intention would be to take this in and get them to make it for me. Obviously, my no buy will still be on at that point. But I'm hoping if I can say at Christmas time, I'm going to London, I really want to do this can you give me the money for it for Christmas that my parents will accommodate that request because I love this lipstick so much. That shade is just so beautiful. I feel like it really suits me in terms of my eyes and my hair and everything and I just don't have anything that's a spot on dupe for it in my collection which I was kind of surprised about because I was like oh it's like a typical me sort of gingerbready orangey red looks like a colour that was used in the Lion King. That's my colour palette but I cannot dupe this and I want to be able to because I love it so much. So although I can't actually use this exact lipstick because it's very much expired, I'm going to keep it in my collection for now. I have two Dior lipsticks here that are also in the kind of theatrical route. I think I'm ready to make my peace with parting with both of them. I feel like when I was blonde, a lot of these colours that are kind of like grey or whatever, like they still looked theatrical but they didn't jar quite as much as they would if I was wear them now. The second one that I've got is Visionary Matte. I actually love this colour so I know as soon as I swatch this I'm going to want to keep it. Again I feel like when I was blonde I had cooler tones around my face. I feel like I could carry off cooler toned makeup but I feel like now that I've gone back to a warmer hair colour these cools like the blues and the greys just don't really do much for me now so I'm going to 
get rid of both of these. One that I will be keeping, this is my Guerlain 1925, which is a beautiful red, so I think this was actually, this was in my 12 Pans of Christmas Project pan last year. Classic red, but I do love the Guerlain formula, I obviously love the Guerlain cases, this is an Art Deco one, I don't think you can get this one anymore. Keeping that one. I will also definitely be keeping my Urban Decay Game of Thrones lipstick. This one is the shade Sansa Stark, who my cat is named after. For those of you who are regular viewers, I'm sure you will have heard me talking about her before. This is what the packaging is like on the the Stark lipstick, if you can see it with the, the wolf's heads. And the shade itself is just a very easy to wear sort of nude peachy shade. I feel like that actually looks weirdly close to that gold in terms of the way it's picking up on camera but it's much easier to wear in real life so definitely keeping that. And then the last item that's up for consideration is this Confession lipstick from Hourglass. Now this is the shade I Am and I didn't pick this, I got it in a goodie bag from John Lewis but I love the packaging. Obviously it reminds me of like an old cigarette holder, very Audrey and Breakfast at Tiffany's vibes. They are refillable so I can actually take this shade out and I could keep the packaging and put a different shade in but I don't own any other shades so this is the only shade that I own. As I said it's the shade I Am so let me swatch that for you. And it's not remotely offensive but it's also not the shade I would have picked if I had been purchasing this lipstick. I'm a little bit torn here because I feel like I definitely want to keep the packaging but if I keep the packaging I'm basically committing to buying one of these lipsticks at some point in the future, which I can't say any of them are really on my radar. Oh, I don't know what to do. I feel like I could get rid of the colour and keep the packaging, but as I say, it's then I'm basically signing up to buy another one in the future, and yeah, like, I wouldn't be buying another one in the future if I didn't keep the packaging, so I should probably just get rid of it, shouldn't I? But it's just, I mean, it's such a beautiful item. It's just so Audrey and Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's, yeah, I feel like I, I know how it sounds and I know that if I was to finish this section now saying I'll just keep it, you guys would probably be shouting at me and quite rightly, so I think I need to let go of this. Oh, literally apparently. But yeah, this, this hurts because it's such a beautiful, pleasing package, but it's far more about the packaging than it is about the actual lipstick shade, so I think I'll let go of this one. So in terms of where we are, I'm keeping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three things. I've got the lip gloss that I'm coming back to later. I've got my two maybes from my lipsticks. So what did I say? Keeping 23 and this is my getting rid of. So for getting rid of we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay so 13 going, 23 staying. Let's swatch these again just to consider them again. So this is Cote d'Amour and then this is the one that's got no name on it from Colourpop. You know what, I think we're going to do an even split here. I think I'm going to make my peace with getting rid of Cote d'Amour, even though the name is amazing, but I just don't love that colour. But I do really like this one, so I'm going to keep that. So I've now got 24 that I'm keeping and 14 that are going, so I feel like that's a really good ratio, actually. I'm really, really pleased with that. I will put up a screenshot of what these add up to in terms of what they are taking value-wise off of my inventory. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you next Sunday with my next one. Bye!